everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Uh, I know it's a little warm in here, so we'll make it short and sweet and uh, get us back out into the food and air conditioning. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks to all of our EPC and CSI customers. Thanks to Mayor Rickenman for coming out here uh, and joining us, along with the Department of Commerce, uh, Lexington County, uh, and I'd like to give a special shout out to Ryan Coleman, the Director of Economic Development. Uh, Ryan was a huge help in getting us in this new location here in the city. Uh, we are thrilled to continue to be a part of this local community. We look forward to expanding our local and regional support. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Pat Laughlin. I'm the president and CEO of EPC. I've uh, been with this company for 30, almost 31 years. So it's a great honor for me to be up here uh, uh, speaking and uh, being a part of this uh, facility and this program. Uh, as many of you know, EPC is a wholly owned subsidiary of CSI Leasing. We process all their off-lease IT assets, uh, along with uh, equipment from EPC's customers, their owned assets, uh, all come into this building uh, so we can dispose of them, uh, recycle them, and resell them. Over the years, it's been an amazing journey watching EPC grow to satisfy the growing needs of our customers. We now have eight facilities in the United States 23 facilities worldwide, spanning four continents. In this building alone, we have 63 employees, hoping to grow that to about 80 to 85 employees over the next year. We have uh, over 500 employees in the United States for EPC, and over 600 employees worldwide for EPC. Since we first opened in Columbia in August 2008, we continue to grow our staff and our service offering to the local community. This new facility is already processing over 20,000 IT assets a month, and we expect that number to grow substantially. Our team here wipes the data, processes the equipment, makes any necessary repairs on the equipment, and then we resell it. Anything that doesn't get resold gets sent back to St. Louis so we can recycle the equipment, effectively reducing our customers' carbon footprint, which I know is important to the City of Columbia and to the mayor. Also, you can see behind me is our big DDRV truck. Our services for EPC go outside of this building. We go out on the road and do services as well. Our DDRV is our data destruction and recycling vehicle which allows us to give our customers secure services right at their doorstep. In fact, you'll have an opportunity to, to see our DDRV when we do a tour of the facility. We have one that's open and we'll be able to go into the back of it and see how the destruction of the, of the equipment and the hard drives works. The DDRV arrives at the, at the customer facility, shreds their hard drives, and records the entire process we now have 12 DDRVs in the United States, plus seven more around the world. So, again, thank you for coming out. Uh, we're gonna give a, a tour here after this uh, for anyone that wants to see the facility. Uh, but I'll save all the good fa fun facts uh, about the building and about our facility for the tours. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to uh, invite Mayor Rickman to say a few words. And I've got a, actually I've got a few gifts for him as well although he already peeked at one of them. For his office, I've got a little DDRV truck with hard drive shreds inside of it, so he can keep that on his desk. And of course, an EPC polo shirt, so when he goes out golfing or doing, he's got EPC represent representative. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank uh, y'all for having us here and thanks for the investment. But you know, when somebody gives you a shirt like this, it makes you think they want you to come to work tomorrow. So uh, I better watch out and see. But if we're, I'm on the payroll, we might have a different conversation. First of all, I want to really thank y'all for your continued investment here in Columbia. I mean, taking this facility 
and really being a spur. I was just mentioning when we came in, I've noticed that the stores across the street and other places have kind of cleaned up since y'all have moved in and things are really starting to happen and this is going to be an opportunity and continuing to look at how you can use the rest of the building for potentially other businesses is what we need. We needed a spark over here. We're making a uh, close to $8 million investment here, hiring 63 people with the goal to be much higher, 85 I believe is the number that I heard. But also knowing that you're going to continue to grow this business here, it, it's an asset. It's something that's needed but it also fits into our sustainability plan. When we look, we're the only city in South Carolina that has is gold lead certified. So all of these type of industries, these investments actually help us get to our next goal. We want to be platinum as a community. And being the only city in South Carolina that's gold, we'd like to have that feather in our cap, but we want to continue to move forward. But I really want to just appreciate the, the investment and the, the continued, and I know that you know, getting here and Ryan and everybody was really excited about this opportunity to grow in this building and coming here and seeing today what it looks like and what's happening inside, how many pieces y'all are. I mean, 20,000 units a month is, I think is a ton and y'all are just saying it's the beginning of the surface, which I can't wait to see it as it ramps up and, and where that goes. But the fact that everything that comes into this building leaves in another form either to be reused, refurbished or recycled says a lot about what your commitment is to the industry and it, it comes up a lot you know as we talk about batteries and we talk about long-term electric cars and electrification across the one thing that keeps coming in that conversation is how do we sustain that long term this is the type of operation that helps us sustain those investments and make our environment much more safer for our future because what we're doing today is not for us it's for our grandkids and so we want to continue to do that so they can enjoy the lives that we had and i just want to thank you so much pat for your investment your continued investment and all your employees for being here and being part of our community with that i'd like to turn it over to the district representative councilwoman tina herbert Thank you, Mayor Rickman. I will tell you all, I was joking with the mayor and said, I'm going to take your staff. I'm going to take that truck. But I don't have an office in City Hall, so I'll let, I'll let it stay in, the, in your office, but it's mine. Um, and I, too, want to thank Pat for um, allowing me to be here. Um, one of the biggest things that this moment is a good example of is as industries change and the use of real estate is changing, we're seeing that a lot of our big box shopping centers, just like our big malls, are not being used for retail like they normally were. Um, and so you see how we have um, governmental entities coming in and trying to take over um, Columbia Mall and so forth. What I like about this is, well, first of all, I used to shop at this Walmart. I attended Christian, I don't know if any of you all live around here, but I attended Christian Life for probably 10 years. It's on the other side of the highway. And I went to eight o'clock service and I ordered, had my stuff ordered for Walmart and I was here at 10 and I was home by 11 and Sundays were a perfect day with the Lord and groceries and everything else I needed for the week. So I was personally impacted when it closed. And so this is a kind of like a full circle moment for me, but it is also, it helps us see, and you all are providing leadership and an example of what can happen to some of these spaces because we're starting to see the vacancies. Um, and it also helps people, a lot of times when they see change, they start getting afraid. Well, what are we gonna do when all the malls start closing and people aren't using the retail spaces? Well, this is a prime example adaptive reuse there are other places there are other uses so I am not afraid of the future um, and what's going to happen I'm excited about the opportunities that are going to be created when some of these other big box and retail stores um, have to close down and probably because I single-handedly help that with ordering way too much stuff and I probably shouldn't have said that but it's a, it's a reality. Things change, and we have to continually keep up with the changes. And I think that y'all are a great example, and I really like that y'all are private sector and that you're IT, and that is where we are going. 
and you're leading the way for Columbia. So thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thanks to everyone else that is here. And um, Mayor, you want me to get the truck afterwards or I'll get it afterwards. Thank you. all